welcome to this episode of Doxology Matters. We're thankful that you may have joined us uh, video through video, or you may be listening online through your favorite streaming platform like Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're thankful that you are listening in, and we pray you'd be encouraged. We desire on this podcast to help you think deeply about God's Word as you praise Him. That is our mission, and we pray that that really rings true to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email at doxology at bbcyorktown.org, and we connect with you. Well, today I'm super stoked. We have some new guests to the podcast. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're they're weighing in. So uh, first, I want to introduce uh, Alana McHugh Gomes. Yeah, she is my wonderful assistant. She started back in September. How's it been so far? Yeah, no, it's actually it's been great. It was. Um, I was thinking that this month is actually the six month mark, I believe, oh. of me working here. So it's crazy. It's it's flown by. Any regrets? <laughs> <laughs> no, none so far. But I'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please do, please do, please do. And she has our great friend Amber Parrott. That's me. What's your middle name, Amber? K, which means pure. K like K A Y. K A Y. Okay, Amber K. Perry. Amber okay, K. is the K named after anybody? Uh, it's my grandmother's middle name, so I inherited it. Okay, yeah. okay. But what's funny is that Amber and I, are, our names rhyme. So I'm Alana Renee. She's Amber K. That we started a rap right now. <laughs> <in life. laughs> the beginning of greatness. Man, y'all are just like, what do they say? Uh, peas in a pod or yeah, something yeah. like mm-hmm, that? Mm-hmm. I've never seen peas in Well, I guess I have seen peas in a pod. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, today's episode, we're going to talk about Christian friendship, and what a great two ladies to have on to talk about that. A couple of weeks ago, we met in a coffee shop in Williamsburg, and I was just blown away by their depth, their uh, godly desire to pursue Him, their love of God's Word, and their love for each other. So I thought it would be helpful to you listening, watching, wherever you are, to see an example of godly friendship. Mm -hmm. So tell me where you guys, how you guys met. Oh, you want to start that? (laughs) Sure. Uh, So we met about 150 years ago. (laughs) Um, I noticed you look a little aged. Yeah, you know, the eye cream only goes so far. Um, In youth group, uh, we first met, I believe, eighth grade or just before eighth grade? Just after eighth grade. So we... we, I started attending uh, a church that we both went to, and it was June of 2008, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's better at dates than I am, so. Um, but the uh, inaugural moment, I mm-hmm. think this is a very significant moment in yeah. our, our friendship that really kicked off is Alana moved across town, and my brother and I helped with some of the moving process, and I remember sitting in her new bedroom, we had just moved a bunch of boxes in, and we just chatted for like a really long time. And at some point in that conversation, I remember just being like, no, this girl, we're going to be friends. Like this is yeah. going to be a significant friendship. Aww. And how old were you guys at that point? So I moved in 2009. I was 15. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So 15. we met at 14, but I think 15 was really when things kicked off. Okay. Yeah. Real quickly, give me a background testimony of how you came to faith yeah. and just a little bit about your journey. We'll start with you. Okay, sure. So I am really blessed and fortunate to come from a family of faith. I have a lot of pastors and like steadfast servers in my family. And so I was born into that culture. Um, but for my own walk, I had this moment when I was eight. Um, I was, I'm an army brat, so we kind of moved around. We okay. were in, involved in different churches at different levels. Um, and we were trying a new church that had a uh, Awanas program. And so I don't even know if we were going to the church on Sundays at that point, but my parents wanted to get me and my brother involved in something that just gave us an opportunity to connect with other kids, was a good place to, you know, run our energy out, learn some scripture. And um, we got stickers for reciting scripture. And uh, one of the days I was reciting one of the scripture pieces, and I believe it, it was the, um, you know, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth um, from Romans. And mm-hmm. that's when the leader that was like listening to me recite the scripture was like, do you know what that means? Uh, and I was kind of like, no, I just wanted the sticker. <laughs> and she's like, do you want to <laughs> talk about that, what that meant? And that was the night that I accepted Christ and, you know, prayed a prayer of salvation. And um, so I was eight at that point um, and kind of, you know, continued increasing in my knowledge of Christ. That moment for me, because I was raised in a church environment that was kind of an aha, like, oh, I need to invite Christ into my life moment. Um, uh, yeah, so then 
it wasn't until maybe high school around the time that I met Alana that I really started pursuing that more intentionally. But even in the meantime, um, I've always been blessed to like know that Christ is near and be able to like talk to him, confide mm. in him. So. I remember uh, I was growing up, I had uh, two, two people, George Stanley and Nadine Million. I believe both of them have passed now. But I remember being confronted with the gospel and realized that I was a sinner in mm. need of God's grace in mm. Jesus Christ. Of course, as you get older and live longer with Jesus, you're able to speak about it in a more informed way sure. about redemptive history and what the gospel actually means. But I, it, it was clear to me by God's Spirit that He drew me to Himself and that I was a sinner in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And He saves, yeah. which is mm-hmm. amazing. Alana, how about you? Um, I also grew up in a family of faith, and um, when I gave my life to the Lord, that earliest that I can remember was fourth grade, but I really feel like it was more of I saw my brother do it and go through the process of being baptized, and I was like, oh, I think I want to do that too, and I think I didn't really understand the depth of it at that time, and so as I got older, there was a point where I felt like I think I was in ninth grade. It was the summer I was going from ninth grade to 10th grade. And um, I really felt like I had made some decisions that didn't align with who God had called me to be. And I made the decision that summer to rededicate my life to the Lord. And I really feel like that was the changing point where um, I just started to deepen my relationship uh, with the Lord. And it has been incredibly different in all the best ways uh, since that point. Fantastic. One of the things that I appreciate about you, and we could talk for a good while about evidences of grace that I see in you, but that you have God's word stored up in your heart. It, it comes out without you planning to speak it. It just comes out. Mm-hmm. Where was that fostered in your life? Oh, wow. Where was that fostered? I think... Did you see it modeled by your parents or... I definitely think that my family wants, you know, tries to model like authenticity and vulnerability. My mother has a background in counseling. So we were always very aware of, you know, what is it that you feel? Why do you feel that way? And do you understand what you're feeling? But I also feel just like the more that I have gotten to know the love of God, um, I've just been comfortable expressing my emotions freely to the Lord. I know that the Lord can handle my emotions. And um, I know that the people that are around me and closest to me can also handle my emotions and have been really faithful, like Amber, to walk with me through that process where I feel comfortable of just describing that to people freely. So that was more about emotions, but about scripture. Like, where did you see, where was oh, the, the love okay. of God, uh, the love of his word? Where would you see that that was fostered? Like, it is a certain time that somebody was like, study God's word Did you have somebody that encouraged you specifically or is it just mm. as a Christian you just got more and more of an appetite for God's word yeah no I think that actually probably was in all honesty more recently there are definitely scriptures that um, I grew up learning a lot of songs that helped me remember mm. scripture like even from vacation bible school um to now that I mm. still sing to myself but um I think that during COVID, really, you know, there was a lot of um, downtime, but also a lot of, you know, hard times during during that season to where I just spent a lot of time with the Lord. And I think it was during that season that um, there was just a lot of a lot of growth, a lot of learning how to be um, humble and receive the word of God. Um, and that's kind of where that has gotten me today. That's so. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, today's topic is Christian friendship, as we said earlier, if you're still watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the Bible says, I memorized this, I think it's maybe the KJV, a friend stick it closer than a brother. How would you define friendship just in general if the secular man or woman are listening to this episode? How do you think they define what friendship is? Yeah. So from a secular point of view, I think friendship is a very different conversation than from, uh, you know, scriptural or Christian point of view. So starting with a a secular point of view, I would say it typically um, hinges on like common interests, like can we watch the game together? Can we go shopping together? Um, And a lot of times it's just a way to define people that get along that may or may not be family. Um, So I think friendship while not to say that in a secular environment there are no deep friendships, but 
Um, it's a broader term, but I think what the Lord has called us to in friendship is deeper than mm. just a, a sense of like, oh, hey, you want to go hang out? Like, I think there's more, I mean, especially pulling off of that verse, you know, closer than a brother, that's a pretty significant relationship. And so, um, yeah, from my point of view, I think friendship becomes about walking alongside, I think, of Jonathan and David, like the sense of, okay, let's do this together. Let me follow you. Let me mm. stand alongside you. Let me fight with you. Mm. Um, and let me get to know you on a level that is beyond just like, let's hang out after work. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, secular friends, like there's, if you're not a, if it's two unbelievers, there's not a desire to reconcile when there's friction. And if certain conditions aren't met, met rather, people can dip and say, sure. no longer I'm going to be a friend. But when it's a, it's a bond around Jesus Christ and you're a Christian, then we should want to uh, reconcile, confess our sin to one another, and repent mm-hmm. and repair those relationships. So as I think about what you just said, the contrast would be, one of those would be the distinction for that. Any thoughts you have, Alana, about that? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with Amber. Um, she has a lot of knowledge on this friendship topic since she just spoke about it at a retreat. But um, I really think about friendship as somebody who is going to walk alongside you. I feel like for me personally, if if you're not going to walk alongside me, then you're an acquaintance. You're really not a friend. Um, so for me, friendship goes deep, whether it is with people that love the Lord or do not love the Lord, there has to be a certain amount of depth. That's not just going to be like a, Hey, how are you? How's your life doing? Like, no, I actually want to walk with you and I want to do mm. life with you. Um, I want to know how your heart is doing. Okay. I have so many follow-up questions to that. <laughs> so let me try to start with one of them in no particular order. How many friends do you think those type of deep relationships is a person able to have and to really foster it deeply and well? Hmm. Like, is it 15? Is it, does it depend on some of the person's capacity, maybe their schedule? But what would you say to maybe somebody listening? It's like, I really only feel like I have one deep friend. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I am a huge believer in two things. One, God creates very unique people. So there are some people who have more of a capacity to go deeper with more people. Um, and two, I would argue that that you could make that argument from uh, Psalm 139. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. God has made us unique and he knows everything about us. Amen. Amen. Uh, two, there are seasons of life. So, you know, Alana and I are both in a season of singleness, so we don't have to, you know, attend to our marital relationship. We don't have kids to raise. We don't have dynamics where we have other responsibilities that have to go first and foremost. And so we may have more capacity in this season to have deeper friendships outside of the household than we may in a future season. And there are other contributing factors like, you know, the Lord may be calling you to write a book or he may be calling you into the mission field. Like depending on where, what season he has you in, your time and your emotional capacity could vary and that number can ebb and flow. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, that's really great. I'm so thankful that uh, I met you in God's sovereignty and providence through Alana. Yeah, you're really a blessing. What do you think? Uh, well, my follow-up question to that is, I know Alana says that you guys send voice memos to each other. <laughs> like, tell me a little bit. About, what's that about? That goes right back into the season that we yes. are in, in yeah. all honesty. You know, so Amber and I actually live like like a two minute drive from each other. We grew up in church, school and everything. Um, but I think after college and especially now that we are adults and have full-time jobs, like even though we live so close to each other, we just don't have the ability to see each other the way that we'd want to, um, and to be able to touch base, even to have a phone call. It's really something that you have to schedule. And I just think that comes with being an adult and, um, having to work with whatever season you're in. So Amber and I just started sending voice memos. I was like, we, I'm determined to stay in touch with you and I want to know what's actually going on in your heart and this is the way that we are going to do it. That's fantastic. I mean, that's a takeaway for all of us that now in the digital age, we have all kind of means to connect. FaceTime, which I love. (laughs) Anybody that knows me knows I love to FaceTime. Uh, I'll FaceTime people at crazy times and um, not crazy times like three in the morning, but I just love to FaceTime. There's voice memos. There's uh, Marco Polo. Uh, I still use that with a couple friends. So there's all these different ways. And I would say it's not just for friends. And I'm sure you would agree, but like 
to your spouse or to those maybe across the country that are distant family members that you don't get to see as much, those are opportunities in God's common grace to us that we can have dominion over technology and seek to foster Christian community. Would you agree mm-hmm. to that? Absolutely. I, you know, I think technology um, it definitely has its pros and cons, but I think one of the cool things that it provides and we found in our voice memos is it can be a way to make our flexible time slots work better and be able Mm. to say, okay, I have a 30 minute drive. It's not at the same time as your 30 minute drive. So I can record something. And then when you have a chance, you can listen to it and we can still have opportunities to stay connected in between. Now I am a huge fan of face to face. So I think voice memos are an in between. They do not Mm -hmm. replace your ability to get face to face. And so my encouragement for anybody listening is, yes, by all means, use those electronic tools. Um, Don't let those like your desire not to use electronic tools get in the way of not connecting with someone. But prioritize as best as you can the opportunity to have face-to-face interactions. Mm -hmm. So let me drill down. You said you're a huge fan of face-to-face. How would you say like three or four bullets of why you value that? Yeah. Um, So I think you can think and present yourself a certain way when you're not physically in the room with somebody. Mm -hmm. And so it can be easier for you to um, not just be your authentic in the moment self. And some of that can be good, right? Like you can <laughs> say something that you need to repent for and then backtrack and, you know, delete the text. And some of that can be helpful. But I believe that part of why God has this in, in community is not just for us to repent in and of ourselves, but for us to sharpen each other and be able to call each other out. And so if you're not willing to be where you are in that moment in front of somebody in the room, you don't allow others to speak into that and be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have said that. Or, hey, maybe that's speaking to something in your heart that I think the Lord wants to heal. Let's talk about how that's not true or, you know, whatever it is. So that's maybe bullet point one. Yeah. Um, bullet point two is I just, I think that's how we're designed. Like God, mm-hmm. God, while again, technology is a tool that he allows us to be blessed by um we were created to be with each other that's right Um, and so i think that speaks to the design he has for us and we need to honor that and we need to again as best as we can like there are situations where you can't always you know fly out to see your friend in california but as best as you can or you know three miles down the street you can't (laughs) can't always get dinner with them but as best as you can prioritizing that um yeah, that's the church. I mean, I thought about uh, don't forsake the assembly, mm-hmm. uh, the exhortation for us to meet together locally. Um, how do you think social media with its, and that's a whole other podcast topic, and we've done that, but how do you think social media is maybe different or the the grain of the stream, rather, of authentic deep friendships as a, in contrast to Instagram filters society, then my life is perfect, how that is projected across society through social media. Mm-hmm. How would you say, how would you describe that contrast and, and how do we think biblically about those two worlds? Yeah, I definitely think that there are some pros to the social media world when it comes to even vulnerability and authenticity and connection. Um, Specifically, even when I think about some videos on on TikTok, it's given people a platform to create a a video where they can make themselves vulnerable if they feel like they want to do so. It's given people a chance to connect with people. Um, But I do think that on some level, like a relationship that's online can only go so deep because you're not walking with somebody day in and day out. I still think that connection is valuable. Um, It still has substance. And I've seen many people start their friendships online and have them blossom to be something else. So I think that that's a great tool. But obviously, as we've talked before, um, or you've mentioned before on the podcast, that social media is just social media. Like you're only seeing a very small part of people's lives. And so it's easy to maybe look at somebody else's, even like friendship and life and be like, wow, I don't have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, you can fake things in person, right? Like you can put on a false front in person. There, It's just way easier on social media. And so I think, as Alana pointed out, there are people who are coming in front of cameras and they're being authentic and they're being more vulnerable than I think we've even seen in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you make that choice to post something, there is so much temptation um, to just, you know, only present one part of the story. Yeah. We should come back and do an episode on uh, living authentic, transparent as Christians fun. in the yeah, church. Absolutely. That would be good. Yeah. Against the social media, against, uh, I forget what they used to say years ago, because I am in my 40s. Um, <laughs> like, put on your, your Sunday dress. Oh, yeah. Kind yeah. of thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't see that in the Bible. Nope. <laughs> as you think about biblical friendship, it, we've kind of alluded to it. You guys have. Is there an inference of accountability? Hmm. Oh, you take it away. Oh, sure. And how yes. would you describe that <laughs> dynamic in y'all's friendship? Oh, yes. Oh, man. So absolutely. I, I think the body of Christ, again, you know, we spoke a little bit about it earlier. We, God wants to sanctify us. He mm -hmm. wants us to partner yes. in that process of sanctification. And so that is not just a solo individual project. Like mm. that's what the body of Christ is about. And these friend, Christian friendships are part of the body of Christ. And so Go ahead, sister. <laughs> that, that looks like being willing and able to be vulnerable in each other and to allow each other to call each other out. Yeah. Um, now speak the truth in love, right? Like, uh, there is a difference between, you know, really unkindly calling somebody out, even if you're speaking the truth, um, and really graciously and, and from a heart of, um, humility mm -hmm. calling somebody out. And so, um, I think in friendships and Christians friendships, it is essential for you to make sure your heart is aligned with Christ and try as best as you can. Of course, it's all a process, um, to approach each of these, you know, challenging moments with that grace and humility. Um, yeah, in our own, our own relationship, I think there have been moments where it's just speaking up. It's just being honest and being like, I see you saying this thing that doesn't align with what I know God says about you or what mm -hmm. I know God has for you. Let's maybe talk about that. Or if you don't want to talk about that, like, you know, I want to leave this on the table so you can take that to God on your own or, you know, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I think that one of the things that we have mentioned in our friendship, like when we, you know, call each other out in love, especially I feel like it happens often in our voice memos, that sometimes I'll follow back up with Amber and be like, you know, I hope that you knew where my heart was coming from. And because we have a friendship where there is depth and there is safety mm -hmm. with vulnerability, that she's like, I absolutely knew where your heart was coming from and vice versa. Yeah, so. yeah it's it's really funny because I feel like we both do that and I don't think there's ever been a time where we've called each other out and been like Ugh. like <laughs> like we know because we have also called each other out in person right like we've yeah. been in the moment and been like no 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 <laughs> um and so whenever it happens digitally you know we know there's there's attunement there's repair that can happen whether it's in the relationship dynamic or in something that we need to fix in ourselves mm. yeah. and how beautiful it is to do it on a foundation of love mm -hmm. yeah when absolutely. that's there yeah uh, when it's not there, then it's uh, it's not filled with grace and truth right. often. Yeah, right. It could be carried out in the flesh. Um, friendship is not always hearts and rainbows. What? Uh, <laughs> what are some challenges that one might face with a friendship? Maybe you could share one that you guys have had over your years of being friends, and how did you deal with it? Mm. So I will say... In, in all honesty, and I think that this is just like points back to the grace of God is that um, Amber and I are really honest with each other. And so if for any reason there is like how honest, <laughs> like how honest, how Be do you honest. I would say like. As in, if there was anything that even like remotely didn't sit well, if, if something I said or something that she said, um, we don't even give that the time of day to like oh, sit awesome. on the table. Like it is addressed so quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, I think because we know each other's hearts very well, um, that doesn't even happen very often. But I think that you have to be in a place of humility to like ask for forgiveness quickly and to forgive quickly yeah. and um, not to let any of those tensions build up in your heart, like deal mm -hmm. with it right then and there yeah. so that you're not keeping accounts. Yeah. Don't let the sun go down your anger. Absolutely. Reconcile quickly to each yeah. other. 
Uh, I've have throughout the years in ministry, I think of one occurrence where somebody called me and said, Hey, I'd like to meet with you to talk about this. Can we meet next Tuesday? And I'm like, Nope, I can meet right now. <laughs> right. I'm clear in my schedule. I want to reconcile with you yeah. quickly because if you don't, you're, you're kicking the can down the road and then the enemy mm-hmm. yeah. seeks to come in and still kill and destroy. And you start believing lies about the other one. And before you know it, you're way over here when none of that is true. Yeah. And if you get together and reconcile in Jesus Christ with each other, then uh, you're built up more to the image of Christ and you haven't uh, reaped things that aren't fruitful for the kingdom. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Um, did you have any other thoughts about what Alana shared? Yeah. Um, Do you agree with her? I, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And I think that is the strength of our friendship is that, again, like we have safety in communicating with each other. And so when we hit any sort of tension, it, it's right away like, hey, that didn't sit right. Can we chat? Um, but I think even in outside of the interpersonal, sometimes friendship can be challenging in the Christian setting because you want more for your friend than they necessarily want for themselves. And I know not just in our own friendships, we've seen that in each other, but in friendships we have with other friends, like watching people walk lifestyles that aren't necessarily where we know they could be, um, whether that's, you know, not producing good fruit or not making choices that are kind to themselves or in line with the goodness that God has. And so I think that is another dynamic of Christian friendships that can get really tricky because you can want to be the Holy Spirit in somebody else's life or, you know, be that voice um, to beyond just, hey, let's think about that, right? Like we talked about that, that confrontation and that honesty, but there is a point where you have to let your friends make your own choice and you have to pull back and start just praying and let them do what they're doing. So mm-hmm. that, that I think is a challenging aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. Definitely. I just had a couple of questions that uh, came in my <laughs> mind. I'm trying to remember what they were now because I was engaging with you. <laughs> sure. That's the tough part about being the host is I'm listening so much and I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm, oh yeah, I got to ask another question. Right. We're going to have to get you a notebook like Amber I know. I yeah, that's right. And that's right. Jot it down. <laughs> I'd be, I'm such a techie that I'd have like another thing over here. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember what it was. What are some ways that we can uh, think about, maybe those that are listening, that say, I want to encourage my friend. Mm. How can they do that? Mm. What are some like tangible ways this week, maybe this weekend, that they can reach out to a dear friend? What would be some ways that come to mind? Yeah. Either one uh, of no, you. No, you have to start. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah, thinking. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind is call out their calling. Uh, Ooh. I, I think <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? <laughs> so um, both in like a general, we are all called to be co-heirs with Christ. Like there are things that as Christians, everybody, everybody has certain things that they walk in, certain fruit that they're called to produce, certain um, attitudes are, they're called to hold. And so calling that out and being like, hey, this is the life. This is the goodness that God has for you on this side of eternity. Um this is something you can and should be stepping into and just encouraging them like, okay, I, I see that you could have more joy in your life. What could that look like? Um, but then on an individual level, you know, the thing about friendship is we know each other, right? And so you may see a gifting in that person's life that they're, you know, struggling to act in. Um, so for example, uh, you know, Alana has a beautiful voice and she has a call to lead worship and she has um, just a heart for like leading other people into that atmosphere of worship. And so, um, you know, if she wasn't in that calling, I could be like, hey, by the way, you have a beautiful voice. Like you have a calling and anointing anointing on your life to lead people into worship. Like I want to encourage you. I see that. I want to confirm that in you so that you can be encouraged to step into that mm, yourself. I love that. Pointing out evidences of God's grace in their life. Yes. I had a friend that's doing that with me right now, uh, Dean Robertson. He's one of my accountability partners. Sure. He and Bob Bonta, and we've been going through without getting into that aspect here on the podcast, but uh, a, a dynamic to where we're having to expand the studio at my home, and it's a $8,000 additional investment for the technology. And he has intentionally prayed for me, asked me all about it and encouraged me of how God is using the ministry and using me in so many ways. And 
as I approached that conversation, I was feeling like stressed, discouraged. I was not trusting the Lord as I should, but as I talked with him, I just felt so encouraged. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, God's going to take care of that. He's going to build his church. He's going to be faithful to complete the work he started in me. He has provided all these years. He's going to provide. Yeah. So yeah, that's just a beautiful thing about friendship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reminding yeah. each other. Yep. Absolutely. And saying no to the lies that yep. the devil tries to tell us. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and he, even piggybacking like right off of that, um, being able to like speak somebody's true identity over them. And like you're talking about with the lies that you, you know, might be believing, um, goes right into like is there some kind of false identity that you're believing like what are those lies and being able to call them out being able to replace them with the truth of God yep. having friends that can do that um, you know for you and that you can do for them yeah reminding each other that our identity is in Jesus Christ not in what we do or how we produce yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do a session on identity in Jesus Christ <laughs> oh, too, right? Absolutely. I'll just keep writing down all sessions. Yeah, we need, hey, yeah, write those down. <laughs> and didn't you do one on identity at Flourish? I did. Oh, okay. I did. Okay. I'm very passionate about identity because it's just such a big thing these days. Yeah. Yeah. Any further thing you might want to say about friendship as we uh, come to a close on this episode on Christian friendship? Ooh, I would say um, actually piggybacking off of a direct quote from Keith McMinn, to um go ahead <laughs> talk slow no to, <laughs> to um be willing to step out into waters that don't feel safe Ooh. oh yeah okay, yep. it was good it was a good word because in friendship you can't just go into a friendship expecting that like everything is going to be hunky dory and you guys are going to be best friends like right away it takes a level of vulnerability mm -hmm. you need to be willing to make yourself vulnerable it opens up the door for deeper um, levels of, of friendship and obviously you want to have some discernment with that like you don't want to go up and uh, you know into a situation with like your walls all the way up but you also don't want to just go up to somebody that you just met and maybe like pour out more than what you should have right? right there's a level of discernment that we have through the holy spirit where yes. we know that it's okay to um to open up at a certain time and so i would say to approach it that way because if your walls are always up who is ever going to be let in mm. um so to really approach friendship with you you're going to have to put yourself out there you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone but that is how you grow mm. right that is how you flourish yeah. yes yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I would add and really want to speak to the people who are listening who are like, I don't even have one friend, right? Mm -hmm. um, pursue friendship with God first. That's good. And trust him to put you into those friendships yeah. um, and ask him to, right? You know, pray and ask, Lord, okay, I don't have these connections. Alana are talk and Amber are talking about these friendships. Like, where do I even get started with that? Pray about it. Ask the Lord, you know, grow me in my relationship with you and my friendship with you and then also put people put me in communities and i think of um i believe it's maybe psalm 24 that that talks about him putting people in families that isn't just you know in a literal like platonic like a uh what's the word i'm looking for you know the mo father mother you mm -hmm. know sister brother family mm -hmm. um it's it's also in communities where you have these closer than a brother friendships that mm -hmm. uh he will put you in I was just going to say that um, I was just talking to somebody about it the other day that isolation is from the enemy. Mm -hmm. So in order to be a part of the body of Christ, do in, in do friendship, like you have to be in community. So yeah. if you don't have community, like I would just encourage you to uh, seek out a local church or, you know, look up some events in your area and, and put yourself out there, you know, to be a part of community. That's exactly right. God didn't design us for isolation. Right. He designed us to be together. And he fleshes that out in Christian community in the local church of Jesus Christ, a Lone Ranger Christian mm -hmm. that goes out on his boat on Sunday to just be with God alone is not how God set up his church. Right. We need each other mm -hmm. generationally as well. Uh, Psalm 145, four, one generation shall commend your works to another. We need to, we need each other. I remember hearing John Piper say one time that um, if it, to, uh, maybe a paraphrase just a little bit, if it was not for his church, he wouldn't be the man that he is. Mm, wow. All those people that are interacting yep. with, with him, strengthening him, we need each other. Yeah. 
And uh, what a good word for us. Well, as you can see on this episode, if you've watched or if you're listening, you can see why I asked these dear godly ladies to be on here. I'm so thankful that they are here and we've been able to glean from their wisdom. Yeah, we want to thank you for watching this episode of Doxology Matters. Uh, we're, we're bringing this in 4K. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, that's good over on this side, but right here it's a little bit tough. And uh, you may even have seen it's a little chilly in here. And so, uh, are you okay? I'm actually yeah. okay. Yeah. My sweater's doing its job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we want to thank you for listening. You can check us out on Spotify, uh, Apple. You can go to our website, bbcyorktown.org, and you can find out about what God is doing here at Bethel. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching.